Hello there. Thank you so much for joining me today. This is Vision Eternity Ministries, and my name is Lee Klein. And today we're talking about what do we have to do to have eternal life? Let's acknowledge Jesus. Jesus, we thank you and praise you that you want to tell us what we have to do to have eternal life. And we're just, we're just asking you, Lord, to make yourself really, really real to us during this video, that you would just manifest yourself in such a way that we can't deny what you're saying, that it even makes sense to us, that, that we could just acknowledge your presence and your word to us today, that it would penetrate our hearts so that we would know for sure what we have to do to have eternal life. I thank you for everything, Lord, and for taking over here today. We praise you, give you all the glory. So that's what Jesus said to me this morning. He said, what do we have to do to have eternal life? And I knew what he was talking about. He was talking about that rich man, Mark 10, 17. And as Jesus was setting out on his journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, teacher, you are essentially and perfectly morally good. What must I do to inherit eternal life? That is to partake of eternal salvation in the Messiah's kingdom. Verse 18, Jesus said to him, Why do you call me essentially and perfectly morally good? There is no one essentially and perfectly morally good except God alone. You know the commandments, do not kill, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not bear false witness, do not defraud and honor your father and mother. And he replied to him, teacher, I have carefully guarded and observed all these and taken care not to violate them from my boyhood. And Jesus looking at him and loved him, Jesus looking at him loved him and he said to him, you lack one thing. Go sell all you have and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. And come and accompany me, accompany me, walking, accompany me, walking that same road that I walk. At that, the man's countenance fell, and he was gloomy, and he walked away grieved and sorrowing, for he was holding great possessions. And Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, With what difficulty will those who possess wealth keep on holding it? enter into the kingdom of God. And so what Jesus wants to say to us today is, at least that man asked. At least he asked what he had to do to have eternal life. Compared to today, most people don't want to hear what Jesus has to say. They just want to believe the thing that's comfortable. Everybody goes to heaven. I go to this church. I'm a Christian, and, and really have not asked Jesus, what do I have to do to have eternal life? So Jesus wants to challenge you today to ask him. You know, this man said, I, I did all these from my boyhood, my boyhood. And Jesus was saying, yeah, I know, but there is something that you lack. And that is that you have a God before God. Give away your stuff. Give it to the poor. Follow me. Walk the walk that I walk. And notice how, this is an Amplified Classic Bible, notice how he said he loved the man when he answered him. So for one, Jesus is saying, come to me and ask me. Don't assume that you know. You know, on a daily basis, if you're willing, he will correct you and show you if you're on the wrong path. If you're, if you're walking towards eternal life. And when you get off, he'll let you know. He'll say, uh uh, don't do that. Don't go that way. It's a trick. You're being distracted. And so the man came and he asked. And, and the other point that I want to make is the man had a conviction in his heart, obviously, or he wouldn't have come to ask Jesus. He wouldn't have come to ask. And so much of the time, people, um, don't want to be around those who are walking in the truth because they feel that conviction, but they don't want to know. This man wanted to know. He, he felt that conviction in his heart. You know, he went to church every Sunday. He did everything he thought he was supposed to do, but still he felt there was something that wasn't right or he wouldn't have asked Jesus. And so in him asking Jesus that, Jesus is giving him praise for that. Praise the Lord if you can ask but um, 
so back to those who, who don't want to be around anyone who um, makes them feel bad about themselves because they really know deep down on the inside of them that there's something wrong. And without Jesus, we don't know. Without Jesus, he didn't know. He had to go to Jesus to ask him so that he could see the truth. And so those who are avoiding Jesus aren't going to know, but something always isn't going to be just right in their life. And those kind of people, you know, if you ask them if they're going to heaven, they say, I hope so. I don't, I don't know if I'm the chosen one. You know, they, they read a little bit of the word. They were a little bit taught. I don't know. I hope I'm going to. Or, or some ignorantly just say, yeah, we all go to heaven. We'll all see, we'll all see um, each other on the other side. And that's not true. Jesus was saying, there's one thing that you lack. And what if he said that to you? There's one thing you lack. Maybe it isn't giving all your stuff to the poor. Maybe it's something else. And once you get that thing done that he tells you to do, if there's more, he'll tell you more because he is a gentleman and he's kind and he's gentle. And he's not going to tell you everything at once that is wrong in your life. But um, we, we all have something in our lives that needs to be changed so that we can fit into the kingdom of heaven. And so the man got offended and he walked away. And so many are in that place. They, maybe they go to church on a Sunday and they hear, hear a message or maybe like this message today is convicting you and you quick turn it off because you don't want to know. You, you don't want to know that you're not, not right with God. You don't want to know that you got to do something. I wrote a book, and I, I gave it to a lady, and I asked if she read it. And she said, well, as soon as I started reading, I had to do something. I closed the book. People are offended if they think that they have to work in the kingdom of God. And Jesus said, I'm going to go, and you're going to do what I was doing. And he told this man to follow him. To, to walk the walk he walks. And so he was asking this man to do his work, to be a witness for him. And so there's, there's more than just saying a prayer and, and sitting on the church bench every Sunday or even doing Sunday school. Whatever it is that you're not doing, Jesus only knows the answer. Only he knows your heart. He knows what's wrong in your, in your life, but you're not going to know that on your own. And so that's what he's saying to us today. He's saying... For those of you who think you're ready, ask me. Don't assume. It's a pretty dangerous thing to assume that you're going to have eternal life when maybe you won't. You don't want to find out when you get there that you didn't make it. You don't want him to say, I wasn't acquainted with you. And you're knocking on the door, but Lord, 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 I did this, I did that. He's going to say, I wasn't acquainted with you. Who were you fellowshipping with? What were you believing? Who deceived you? In Matthew 7, 21 through 23, Jesus said, Not everyone who calls me Lord will enter into the kingdom of heaven, but those who do the will of my Father. And many on that day are going to argue with him and say, But Lord, I did this in your name. I did that in your name. Well, maybe you had a God before God. Maybe you held somebody in unforgiveness all your life. And you didn't even know it because you wouldn't go to Jesus. Because you wouldn't go to Jesus. When I do street ministry, there are so many. And I got to tell you, the Christians are the worst. Oh, I'm a secretary at this church. Give your card to someone else. Um, I go to church every Sunday. I go to this church. I have my own religion. Don't talk to me about Jesus is what they're saying. They think they're right with him. The Pharisees thought they were right. You know, you, you can even be a, a leader in the church, a pastor, and um, because of your position, maybe not want to have an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying to you. Getting too busy and caught up in your work that you can't hear Jesus talk to you. He's your source. you got to go to him. And so that's what he's saying to you today. Go to him. Ask him if you're ready. What do I have to do to have eternal life? Don't just assume. Don't just assume that you know. Verse 22, at that saying, the man's countenance fell, and he was gloomy, and he went away grieved and sorrowing, for he was holding great possessions. 
you know, when you walk away from God grieved in sorrow, sorrow and sorrow, or, or someone, you know, says something that convicts your heart and, and you know there's something wrong, many times people go to somebody who will say what they want them to say to pet them. The enemy will use someone to say, no, you don't really have to do that. You don't have to give your stuff away. That's way too extreme. But Jesus is extreme. And Jesus looked around and said to the disciples, with what difficulty will those who possess wealth keep on holding it and enter into the kingdom of God? And the disciples were amazed and bewildered and perplexed at his words. But Jesus said to them again, children, how hard is it for those who trust and place their confidence, their sense of safety and riches to enter into the kingdom of God. It's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. And they were shocked and exceedingly astonished and said to him and to one another, then who can be saved? Jesus glanced around at them and said, with men it is impossible, but not with God. All things are possible with God. And Peter started to say to him, behold, We have yielded up and abandoned everything once and for all and joined you as your disciples, siding with your party and accompanied you walking the same road that you walked. Jesus said, truly, I tell you, there is no one who has given up, left houses, brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or lands for my sake and the gospels who will not receive a hundred times much now in this lifetime, houses, mothers, sisters and brothers children and lands without persecutions and in the age to come eternal life whatever you give up to be right with jesus you're going to receive back a hundredfold whatever lesson he has to teach you so that you can see the truth so that you can prepare to live in the kingdom so you can prepare to be that bride without spot or wrinkle he's not going to hold the truth back from you but whatever you have to give away to get to that place, he said, you're going to have back a hundredfold in this lifetime. So if that man would have gave all his stuff away and, and sided up with Jesus and walked the walk he walked, he would have had more than he had before. He would have had more than he had before. Just like Job, he had more than he had before. It gets hard sometimes, for better, for worse. We talked about yesterday, for richer, for poor, till death do us part. It gets hard sometimes, and, and as God is faithful to us, he's asking us to be faithful to him. Can you be faithful to him? Can you fight the good fight of the faith? Can you lay it down for Jesus? He laid it down for you. You can't be his disciple unless you're willing to give up your life. Will you give up your life for him? Will you seek after eternal life? Will you ask him what is wrong in your life so that you can have eternal life with him forever so that you can be his bride without spot or wrinkle? Will you go on that journey with him to fight the good fight of faith and believe what he said, believe in him, and look away from what you see? That had been a hard thought. Give all your stuff away. I remember a man, God asked him to give away his house and everything, and he sat with nothing. And he said he wouldn't trade that moment for anything. I never heard about when he got it back, but I'm sure that he did. I was in awe. God is extreme. Whatever you give away, he'll give it back to you in return. He's also bringing to my remembrance, I ran into a lady, and she lost her son. And she said, but I'm not bitter. For one, she knows where he is. And for another, she has a love for Jesus. And she trusts him. She knows he has a good plan. Whatever the enemy meant for your harm, God is going to turn it around for good. Whatever devastates you, don't just close the door on Jesus. But go to him. He said, come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden. And I will give you rest. He'll give you rest. He'll show you the truth. The word says not to fret, but bring everything to him and then think on these things. He's going to give you peace. He's going to tell you things to come. He's going to tell you what's happening. And so will you ask him what you have to do to have eternal life instead of assume that you're there? Don't assume. That's the biggest thing 
And that's the biggest mistake you can make of any is to assume you're going to have eternal life. And then on that day when he comes, find out you're not. You're going to wish he didn't come. That's what he said. Get ready. Watch and pray. That doesn't mean assume. Get rid of your pride. Get on your knees and ask him. Ask him. It's not just a prayer. It's not just a ticket to heaven. You're fooling her own with your eternal life if you don't lay it down for him. Revelation 3, 19 and 20. 3, 19 says Jesus dearly and tenderly loves those who he corrects. He was correcting this man so that he could have eternal life. He wants to correct you so you can have eternal life. Verse 20, he's knocking on the door of your heart. That man felt convicted, or he wouldn't have asked. He's knocking on the door of your heart. And if you unblock him, you're going to feel his presence, and you're going to know what to do and what not to do. And if you follow him, you're going to know him. You're going to know what he's thinking. He's going to teach you his way. And you're going to have eternal life. It's not just saying a prayer and then going back to your other life. But it's growing in him, saying yes to him on every account. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. There's a song like that. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Amen. Whatever he tells you to do, his mom said, do it. So whatever he tells you to do, do it. And you will have eternal life. Let him, let him check your heart. Let him make sure. Let him, let him help you make sure that you're on that path that leads to eternal life, that narrow path. Everybody's on the wide path, but very few on the narrow. Let's acknowledge him, Jesus. We thank you and praise you. We're asking you to come and live on the inside of us. We commit to do your will, to heed your voice. And we thank you that you're faithful to do your part, that you're even faithful enough to tell us that we need to ask and not assume. Thank you for teaching us. We submit to you. We give you all the glory. Help us to know it isn't as bad as it looks when you correct us. Everything is fixable, and it's for our good. We love you and praise you and give you all the glory. Thank you, Jesus. Give him the glory now. Get up and praise the Lord. I was listening to that song this morning by... Brandon Lake, get up and praise the Lord. You know what that means or what God was showing me today? Just get up and do what he said. Praise him. Don't sit around and wallow in what isn't, but bring it to pass by getting up and doing what he said. Thank you so much for listening today. God bless you.